Hello, my furniture friends. Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. I just got back from picking up this coffee table at my local Habitat for Humanity Restore, and it looks like some little critter has had quite a good snack on the front leg. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I go about making repairs to damage like that. I'm also going to be painting the base of this table and hopefully restaining this knotty pine top as well. It's giving 90s country right now with this awful orange pine, but I'm planning on fixing the damage on here and giving it a fresher finish that will have an easier time of fitting into today's homes. There's actually not much finish left on the tabletop at all, and it looks like someone may have even started sanding it down in a few other spots before they gave up. Pine is a pretty rustic wood that's really soft and gets marked up easily. So I'm not gonna try and fight that at all, but we can definitely get this looking better than it currently is with a little bit of elbow grease. I filled up a bucket with some warm water and then got started spraying each surface with some simple green and scrubbing things down. Secondhand furniture is usually pretty gross to begin with, but besides the general hygiene factor, it's really important to spend some time cleaning and degreasing your projects before you start sanding so you can make sure that you're removing any silicone or wax buildup from popular furniture polishing products before you accidentally grind those down into the wood. This cleaning time also gives me a chance to get up close and personal with things and just run my hands across each surface to find any less than obvious damage that might need my attention and just get a good handle on what I'm getting myself into. I noticed that the boards that frame out the tabletop here are definitely solid wood. I could tell because the wood grain pattern continues down over the edge and even this knot continues seamlessly. If this were a veneer, it wouldn't match up like that. Once I got the table flipped upside down though, I could see really clearly that the center of the tabletop and the side panels around the apron are all particle board with sheets of pine veneer over top. And that tells me that I'm gonna need to be extra careful when I'm sanding so that I don't accidentally sand right through any of it. I also checked that all the screws were intact and that the legs were nice and tight. And then I scraped these grody old felt pads off the feet. Now to repair this poor puppy chewed leg, I'm gonna make myself a mold on one of the good legs with some hot glue so that I can fill it up with Bondo and use it to recreate the right shape. I used my wax brush, which always has some extra furniture wax on it, just to lubricate the area that I was gonna use a little bit so that the glue didn't stick too well, since I'll need to get that mold off in one piece. And once my glue gun had heated up, I just started squeezing the glue all over the area that I needed to recreate. I think I ended up using about six sticks of glue to build up a nice thick surface that was large enough to completely cover the damaged area on the other leg. And once that had cooled back down, I carefully peeled it off. I took a second to double check that it was big enough to cover what I needed, and then I mixed up some Bondo. This is a two-part epoxy where you mix the putty in the can with a cream hardener that comes in a separate tube and causes a chemical reaction that solidifies the filler in about 15 minutes. You have to move pretty quickly with this once you mix the two components together, but once I had it mixed to a nice even color, I scooped a bunch into my glue form and then squished it right down onto that leg. It's just like when they take a mold of your teeth at the dentist and just like the dentist, I completely overfilled this thing and made a giant gloopy mess. I tried to spread out some of the excess over the scratches and tooth marks up and down the leg while I was at it, but yeah, I just mixed up way too much. Once I was happy with the placement though, I wrapped a bit of masking tape to hold it nice and tight on there while everything's set up. Mm -hmm. 
I left that to cure for about 30 minutes and then I peeled the mold off and just used my putty knife to break away any of the messy excess before I popped a foam interface pad and some 150 grit sandpaper onto my detail sander to start smoothing out the shape. Bondo always gets these little air pockets in it. So once I was happy with the overall shape of my repair, I just used a little bit of regular wood filler to smooth out those little bubbles and moved the table back over to the floor so that I could start working on the top. Since there wasn't really any protective finish left on here and I knew that the center panel was a thin sheet of veneer, I opted for a pretty fine 220 grit to minimize the chance that I'd blow through to the particle board underneath. And like I said, pine is a really soft wood that marks if you even look at it the wrong way. So I didn't worry too much about perfection or trying to smooth out all of the dents and dings. It's going to be rustic no matter what. I mainly wanted to get the color a bit more even and remove all the watermarks that were on here. With the top under control, I put my foam back onto the sander so that I could scuff up the rest of the legs and the apron of the table without flattening out any of the curves and get it ready for paint. Again, I wasn't too concerned about getting things perfectly smooth. I smoothed out a few of the worst gashes, but I really wanted just to create a bit of tooth or micro texture on these surfaces for my primer and paint to hold on to. I did notice a couple of little sanding swirls in the top from my sander. So I ended up going back over that one more time by hand so I could blend those out. And then I cleaned up all my dust. Since I wanted to stain the top of the table, I masked off all the raw wood to protect it while I finished up the bottom. Then I got out my drop cloth and propped things up upside down on some old paint cans. I usually use Zinzer Bin Shellac Base Primer, but I only have a big gallon size of that. And I didn't want to use a roller on all these curvy legs, but I did have a spray can of this Kills Oil Base Primer that should do the trick just fine. This is going to add an extra layer of adhesion insurance for my paint to make sure that it makes a strong bond to the surface. It's also going to seal in any wood tannins that might try and leach up and discolor my paint. And it will unify all of the different textures I've got going on with the sealed wood, the bare wood, and the wood filler so that my paint sits and looks consistent across all of them. I ended up spraying two coats of primer to get nice full coverage and once that was dry I rubbed it down with a fine sanding pad just to get rid of any rough patches mostly where I had those bare wood spots. I did also find one little drippy spot on the front leg so I smoothed that out as well. My pneumatic sprayer that I use all the time is still sitting in the sink waiting for me to clean it. So I grabbed my Wagner electric gun today instead. This is a great beginner paint sprayer that is easy to use and can get really professional results with a little bit of practice. I'm going to paint the base of the table with this cool tone brown called Woodwick by Fusion Mineral Paint. I gave it a good shake up and then strain about half of the pint into the cup and added two or three tablespoons of water to thin it out a touch. Especially with this sprayer, a thinner consistency, 
about the consistency of whole milk, I want to say, is really going to help the paint lay smooth and avoid any splattering or spitting. I tested out the settings and spray pattern on a scrap piece of wood to make sure everything was flowing nicely. And then I got to work spraying down that table. Once I was done with that first coat, I turned on my shop fan to get the air moving out in the garage and left that to dry for about two hours. For the second coat, I flipped the table right way around again and popped it back up on those cans and used this coat just to fill in any light patches and get all the areas where that first pass couldn't reach. I emptied the rest of the paint back into the container and I only used about a third of the jar of paint on this table so there is plenty left over for another project and then I took the sprayer inside and rinsed it all out with some warm soapy water. After another two-ish hours of dry time I was ready to peel up that paper and tackle this top and to keep things consistent I wanted to try doing a paint wash with the same color so I mixed a little bit of paint with a bunch of water those are the exact measurements, by the way. Gave that a good stir and then started brushing this paint wash over the raw wood. Now, usually when I'm doing a paint wash, it's with a lighter color and I like to brush it on and then wipe back all of the excess pigment as I go. But after wiping back this first little section, it didn't look like it left enough color behind. So I decided to just try leaving it all on there to soak down into that grain and dry. mixed feelings about the color of this wood. I don't hate it, but I don't know if I love it either. I guess I'll have to let it dry and I'll reevaluate once I see what it looks like in the morning. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, I like that. I like the way that looks a lot. Definitely not so purple as it was last night. I'm happy with that. Still very rustic. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Since I was good to go with that color, I grabbed my clean sprayer pieces and reassembled everything so I could put a protective top coat over the entire table. Fusion Mineral Paint does have a built-in resin top coat and it's very durable as is, but since there's barely any of that in the watered down paint wash, the top is going to need something else over it. And I chose this Verithane soft touch matte polyurethane to keep the old aged wood feel and add that needed durability. I gave the can a good stir to make sure all the components in there were well distributed. And then I strained some into the hopper tested out the spray again and ended up turning the settings down a bit since this is thinner than the paint was and I don't want any drips. And then I started spraying the top, trying to keep my wrist locked, holding the gun eight to 10 inches away from the surface 
and making sure that I overlapped each pass by about 50%. And I sprayed a coat over all of the fully painted areas as well since I was at it. Once that first coat of sealer was dry, I rubbed it down with my fine sanding sponge again to knock down any roughness caused by raised grain or the wood fibers that had plumped up from the water in the paint wash and top coat. I wiped away that dust and then sprayed on two more coats just over the top with about two hours in between each application. And when that last layer of poly was fully dry, I peeled the paper off of the drawer and installed this new brass knob. I'm not sure this is the best choice on here. So if you have any ideas of what might look better with this, please let me know down in the comments. Here's a reminder of the water stained, scratched, sanded, dented, dinged, and very chewed up coffee table that I rescued from the thrift store. And here is what my fixed up, finished version looks like. I think this can easily fit into a modern farmhouse or cottage core design space now. Thank you so much for watching along as I worked on this project. I hope you found some good information and inspiration to use on a furniture flip of your own one day. Please make sure that you subscribe if you're not already, and I will catch you all next time.